I'm Jenny Bruski. When I'm not listening to ghost stories, I love giving new life to items that others may think of as junk. From mantles to furniture to entire rooms, I take what may have been forgotten and make it better than ever before. These are my projects. And this is Junkin' with Jenny. That indeed it is, and it is Junkin' with Jenny, and it's uh, episode number five. I think so. I believe we are up to. On today's episode, we're going to take a look at uh, an odd uh, storage shelf counter thing, as I like to call it. Okay. A a lot of homes have them, where Uh it's just kind of like off in the corner. A lot of times, they're kind of near kitchens, and sometimes they were intended to be like study areas or or, or just a desk Mm -hmm. or just random storage because they didn't know what the hell to put there, and how to turn it into something really cool. We'll show uh, you how we turned what we had into basically a real kind of rustic wine bar. Uh-huh. It was a cool a cool space. Also, we're going to find a way to give new life to a not-so-modern washing machine. <laughs> Take a look at that. Plus, uh, where else can one hang their vintage hats? Somebody writes in, they can obtain some hats, and they don't know what the hell to do with them. Okay. And I did it either for a while. Uh-huh. I got some ideas, and I think you do too. Also, how to turn parts of a family barn uh, into a vintage bar. That's something I did, mm-hmm. uh, which is really kind of cool. We'll show how we did that. Also, Jenny gives some ideas on how to uh, complete a farmhouse look uh, on an outdoor home remodel. Yes. So lots of uh, interesting things today. On Junkin' with Jenny. I'm Tony Bruski. That's Jenny over there. Or I, Actually, I have to point this way, the way the camera is. <laughs> I'm so, like, I, I get so confused by the way I'm looking at the screen here and where everything is because it's opposite. I would never make a good weather person where you have to do the green screen thing. All this. I would be you looking know, at, yeah. You have to know your geography and you have to know where things are. And well, not just that, just, just up and down and, and uh, <laughs> or left or right. I'd be always like pointing to the wrong areas. People would think there's a tornado coming at them when there isn't. Mm-hmm. It wouldn't work out well. No. So I just, uh, I, like, I'll just stick with this. This is, this is complex <laughs> enough for me. Uh, so uh, lots of uh, exciting stuff on today's episode of Junkin' with Jenny. Plus, we'll give you a preview of what we're going to be talking about. On uh, no, next week's episode, we've been working hard on that uh, throughout the week um, and, and doing uh, a lot of drywall. Tons yeah. of framing and dry- drywall. And I say tons because... Mm-hmm. For us, it's tons. It is. It's not something we're normally doing. And it's something where it's it's uh, it's not too difficult once you kind of get it down. Yeah. It just involves measuring. Thank goodness cutting. our walls are textured everywhere in the house and so hanging. we can heavily texture our walls and kind of cover our boo-boos. But mm-hmm. it's not bad for our first try. No, it really isn't. Uh, next week, we're going to talk about the uh, the entertainment center that uh, you put together uh, basically from the ground up. Da-da-da-da. A built-in yes. thing that uh, really turned out really cool. I'm happy. I'm so proud of it. We'll uh, we'll showcase that. That is wrapped up. The rest of our, our project that we've been working on is not done yet, but that portion is. Mm-hmm. So I say, let's go with that Okay. <laughs> for now. And then uh, there's a lot more to it uh, as, uh, as the, uh, the weeks uh, go on. Let's go and talk about our, uh, a project that we did uh, a while back. This was one that we did um, at, uh, at the last house. And what we're looking at here on screen, by the way, uh, junkinwithjenny.com is the website uh, where you can see these episodes, watch these episodes in full color HD video. Last week we were black and white in standard definition, but this week it's full color HD video. Okay. And you can see uh, all the stuff we're talking about and watch uh, videos, see the pictures before and afters and all that um, at junkinwithjenny.com. So what we're seeing on screen right now is is basically what it was. It was, I guess it was kind of set up like a wine bar. I think it was more so we have some extra cabinets and we don't know what to do in this little space at the end of our stairway. So we're going to throw this here along with the stained glass mirror that we're not going to hang. We're just going to lean it against this extra tile that we had yeah i mean it really yeah. was kind of a throwaway spot it was it's where your stairs and some houses if you're going down to the basement your stairs have a landing and they turn and it was in the nook where the stairs turn going up mm-hmm. and i'm sure they they you know really toiled on what to do with that space and of course i didn't really care for it so i thought we've got to change it and make it functional for us do you think they toiled do you I, think there was much toiling going on here? I don't think there was a lot of toiling going they on. They spent a lot of time putting that tile in and the cabinetry and everything. Okay. So 
I remember when we first saw it, it had marble tile for the top, and yep, then it had yep. slate tile for the back. Yeah. So they did a lot of work on that. I think they. It was like leftover material, though. Like it was, it was, it was floor tile that was from another part of the house from the floor. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I, I, I mean, I think I, I'm, I'm thinking it probably took some work. It took way too, way more glue than they should have used, and they shouldn't have used glue to begin with on a lot of it. Oh my God, we had to take all the drywall off because they just glued it to the drywall. Yeah, I mean, I tried to to get it, mm-hmm. you know, somewhat recovered or, or at least have some of the drywall there, and there were still some some left. But uh, yeah, I mean, what you see there on the uh, the image that's that's like marble floor tile for their uh, top. If you will, yeah. Um, and then, uh, then the backsplash thing was was uh, improperly affixed to the wall, um, and, and yeah, that was a pain to get off. So anyway, that's that's what we had to work with, and it was a nice little storage, you know, kind of catch-all space. Yeah, we for, used it for games and all kinds yeah. of things. But as we were trying to to th- you know figure out some of the theme stuff here and and how to do it and make it and make it look right, uh, it took uh, a little bit of work. And I'm trying to find the after image here. Can I just correct you? Go ahead. I hate it when you say theme. Because to me, that makes me think of a room like where you walk in and we some did, we old did circus lady theme. has put a thousand lighthouses <laughs> around and it's her lighthouse room. No, I go for the feel of a room. Mm-hmm. Not Feel. I don't, I don't theme it. I don't throw a bunch of kitschy crap in there. I, I you sh- can put I, like a shock collar on me or something. I change the way the room feels. And then every time I say the word theme, you just, you know, just press it. Like, yeah! I'm just going to hit you with a bunk bed bell. These, this is heavy. This is this would hurt. Okay, I won't do this that. This would be like a rescue nine one one moment if this thing hit <laughs> right, me. Right, I won't do that. <laughs> like, what happened? I got hit with a bell. Um, so anyway, this is the after picture of what we ended up doing with it. Same one, um, and it involves ship lack, uh, sh- ship lack, ship lap. lap. No lack ship, of ship lap. No, no lack of ship lap at all. How much ship would a ship lap lap of a ship lap could lap ship? <laughs> anyway. Um, there's uh, a lot of sh- sh- there's shiplap in the back. We changed up the light fixture to kind of make it more of a barn-like type look. Um, uh, the cabinetry done with uh, chalk, chalk paint. paint, and we put a new countertop on. Why don't you start from the beginning on, on how we did this and what your envision was for it? Well, the first thing I wanted to do was give it a more rustic feel and get rid of all the mismatched tile that no longer went with the rest of the room. So once we demoed everything and we realized, oh, guess what? We don't have drywall. And we at the time did not know how to do drywall. Mm-hmm. I thought, well, why not use more shiplap? Because that was within our wheelhouse at the time. And this was, what, two, almost three years ago that yeah. we did this. So we've come a long ways. But um, so started from that point. I thought, okay, what goes with that is rustic wood. And I thought that would make a cool countertop and kind of contrast with some white chalk painted cabinets. Mm-hmm. And that was one of my first experiments with chalk paint as well. Mm -hmm. And so chalk painted them, heavily distressed them, and um, sealed them so that, you know, nothing gets on that white paint and and really shows up. You can clean them off. And uh, we found a nice uh, silver pig. We found or aluminum pig. Metal pig. I don't know where we found it, but it, you know, it's got a little magnet that we used and we put notes and stuff on it. But Mm -hmm. it's just kind of fun. It was a nice little accent piece. It fit it really Mm -hmm. well. And there was the wine fridge there that just, it fit, left right. that. That was like the, the surviving piece. Um, and the, the wooden top, we, we kind of took that to make it look a little more rustic. Right. And we found, um, I think it was at Menards, but you can probably get it at any lumber yard. But it's just a piece of pine mm-hmm. that's cut the right, you know, it's the right depth. And we cut it to length and we just stained it and sealed mm-hmm. it. I think we beat it up a little bit too, didn't we? Mm-hmm. We tried to make it look a little little injured you could do butcher block if you wanted to spend the extra money for the extra thickness but since Mm -hmm. we weren't actually cooking on this this was just more for setting things down if we Mm -hmm. were in the basement entertaining then we just opted for just the the single board now when someone says you know i i made it look beat up i made it look aged distressed let's distressed Uh uh-huh themed if you will To distress you. Um, how? Uh, l- let's talk about that process a little bit because I think sometimes it, it can be confusing if you've never done it. How to get? Uh, how to achieve the actual mm-hmm. look of it being beat up? 
what, what would be the, the, the sequential process of going through that? Well, it depends on what you're doing. If you're wanting to distress cabinetry that's painted, mm -hmm. if you're wanting to show wear in the spots where normally over time, 50 or 100 years, you would see wear on a painted item. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be around where the handles are, corners, any edges that, you know, jut out a little bit. So you have kind of a recessed panel on a lot of cam cabinetry, that edge where it recesses in you would do that. Mm -hmm. um, you can sand the paint off, or if you're using chalk paint, you can use a wet rag and just wipe it to where you get the effect that you want, and it looks like the paint has just worn off over time. Mm -hmm. We also distressed the countertop that we put on there, and that's a whole different thing. Um, what we did was we took this brand new piece of wood, and we took it out in the backyard, and you threw stuff at it and I beat it with a chain and you want to get as many dents and crevices and mm -hmm. make it look like it's been on a countertop, you know, for a hundred years and it catches the stain and it catches anything that you put on there. So it really kind of highlights the distress. It doesn't look like a perfect brand new piece of wood. And you want to do that before you actually put the stain on it. You, yeah. you don't want to do it after because that's going to kind of, it'll look a little more like intentional. Well, and you always run the run the risk of if you stain mm -hmm. it first and you beat it and you beat it a little too much, you might, you know, get a spot where mm -hmm. the original wood color is showing through. Yeah. And that creates more work. So just take it out in the backyard, take out your aggressions and your yep. bad day at work and whatever your family said and then. And have fun. What did we say to you that day that made you so angry at the comment? Oh, it wasn't you guys. Um, <laughs> <laughs> another thing that, that I think a lot of people overlook when it comes to uh, distressing uh, the countertop is is dissing it um, beyond just hitting it. Emotionally you, distress you, you the should, countertop. You should emotionally distress the countertop. I mean, seriously, it's one of those things where people don't realize the energy that it will hold. So you, you sit out there after you've beat it up, then really insult it a lot. Talk about you know how how you know inadequate of a countertop it is, how much of a disappointment to you the countertop has been, um, and how it probably will never turn into a useful countertop. And <laughs> just keep talking weird shit. I'm gonna drink. That's uh, that's exactly what what one should do if they really want to achieve you know the full you know, you know get about ninety five percent with just the distressing of it. The emotional distressing of the countertop is what mm, needs to No be comment. Let's move on. That's a different show. We talk about objects okay. that have had uh, negative things. So that was uh, that was a little wine bar that we made. And it, it's it's one of those things, obviously, everybody's space is a little bit different. I do love the light that we put in there, too, because that was a, mm -hmm. a really easy uh, switch out. And it really had a neat, uh, you know, like barn feel to it. Well, one of the tricks to doing that is to getting that kind of barn feel. Mm -hmm. Use exterior lights yeah. on the inside. There's no problem with bringing an exterior light inside or getting a new exterior light and bringing it inside. But you can't take an interior light and take it outside. So it doesn't yeah. work both ways. But you can really get that kind of rustic and, and minimalist feel mm -hmm. by doing that. And the lighting is just so dramatically different. And that's such a huge thing I think a lot of people uh, miss when they're they're doing uh, a piece mm -hmm. uh, or, or a part of their room where it's like, okay, we change the stuff up. But why does it so, so much feel like the old room that we were trying to get rid of? I mean, I'll just put these uh, two images side by side and you can just see the dramatic difference in how the lighting and how the feel of that that space was sure really kind of harsh just you know almost bathroom-esque lighting mm -hmm. um to a, a lighter we did an edison bulb in there and it really just kind of gives it a whole different feel i love the edison bulbs i know in like 10 years i'm gonna, we're gonna look back and then be like okay enough with the edison bulbs <laughs> but uh right now i just i i still get a big kick out of them so uh anyway uh, that was uh, that was that space. Mm -hmm. I like that space. Um, and it's obviously applicable, something that you can do to almost any of those just kind of odd desk-esque type spaces. That or if you want to create a wine bar from mm -hmm. scratch, just get, Easy. you know, off-the-shelf, unfinished cabinets. They're really inexpensive. Mm -hmm. They're at all the home improvement stores. And just do the same steps. It's just go ahead and, you know, prime it before you paint it sure. because it's brand new wood. Yeah. Lots of ways of putting one of those together uh, uh, for very little money. Uh, our next uh, segment here, we've got uh, a letter about uh, this uh, this antique wash basin. And I'm going to pull it up on screen, the image that we got here. Um, it says, I recently acquired this antique wash basin from my mother's garage. It's huge, it's heavy, and in its current state is a bit of an eyesore. I don't want to dump it, 
what should I do? And for those of you listening on the podcast, I can't see it right now. This is, uh, it's a step up from the, the, the aluminum wash basins that, mm-hmm. that you see. This is, I, what, what era would you say this is from? 40s The 40s, yeah. 40s. So, I mean, it, I believe it was, this is technically electric, I believe. Okay. Uh, but we're talking early electric mm-hmm. washing machine, uh, big old cylindrical tube, uh, and just heavy as all get out. And that's just my guess on the date. I sure. don't know, but just having antiqued for a long time, that's where mm-hmm. I would put it. So... The, uh, of course, uh, the, the thing, it's junk. This is junkin' with Jenny. Uh, what would you do with the, uh, the antique wash basin? Well, I had three ideas. Okay. Um, the first one's real simple, and it may or may not be your style. Mm-hmm. But I have seen those turned into really cute planters, but I thought what you could do is make an herb garden in it. Okay. And you can, you know... Put it somewhere, even inside your house, because obviously it's designed to hold water and to hold, you know, things that are wet in it. Mm -hmm. So obviously it's going to hold wet dirt. Plug the drain, that's all. Yeah, Yeah. plug the drain, bring it in. You can have like a little herb garden planter Mm -hmm. inside. Okay. That's a pretty easy one. I get to at least shoot one out because I'm afraid you're going to take up one of mine that I guessed if you have three of them. No, I'm going to go and then you're going to go. Damn it. (laughs) <laughs> okay, if you call up, if you call out one of mine, then you call out one of mine. What I would do with it personally, because uh-huh. I've been having my eye on something like this, yeah, I would take it onto my back deck and I would fill it with ice when I'm entertaining and use it as a drink station. Okay, you you took mine. There. <laughs> I thought I congratulations. Might. <laughs> When I'm entertaining or when the kids are are annoying you, really, it's just fill it with ice and drinks, and mm-hmm. then it's. It, it's it's a mommy wash basin escape day. Well, those you know those <laughs> coolers on stands are mm-hmm. all the rage right now. Sure, but really you just need something to hold ice and drinks. Sure. So this would work for that because again, it's designed to hold water. I so. s- I suppose if you really cleaned it out v- really really well, you could take it one step further, and just pour the drink right into the wash basin and get a bunch of straws. No, I don't think so. Like a giant fish bowl type thing. Okay, now it's your turn. That's my suggestion. Because I have one more. But Go I... for your other one. Mine was going to be the, the 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 drink type station. And the thing is, with something like this, you could, you know, th- there's a lot of potential here for, um, you know, cleaning it up a little bit too. Sure. Um, there's a lot of, you know, the Rust-Oleum type brand paints and mm-hmm. things of that nature. Um, you know, test it out because you don't know what you're going on top of. So you want to make sure, you know, test a little space and see how well it sticks. A lot of times those old uh, appliances like that are, are enameled. Yeah. Which they make a paint that is for that. Okay. So there's tons of ways. I would not, if you're going to use this, do not, uh, my opinion, do not be afraid to recolor it. Mm-hmm. Make it something you want. I mean, you could, you could go as far as, you know, if you like the Coca-Cola look or something, stenciling the Coca-Cola type logo sure. on there. Uh, you know, and, and, and doing that sort of a, a look to it. Um but I would certainly probably paint it up in some way, shape, or form. That's one of the things I think a lot of folks are hesitant on, and I don't blame them. Uh-huh. And I think it's one of those things that we had kind of ingrained in us for a long time. Those of us who kind of grew up uh, with, uh, you know, parents or something that antiqued, um, where you get the, don't touch it, it's going to lose its value. It's like, okay, well, then am I ever going to use it, though, in its its current state? Or am I just going to hold on to this in an attic for 40 years and then resell it for a couple bucks more? I, I like to be able to use these mm-hmm. items and live with them and enjoy them, not just, you know, fear killing the value. I mean, it's 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 one thing if it's a crazy, expensive, insanely rare thing. Uh-huh. Give that the respect it deserves. Uh-huh. But something like this. Well, I think that, you know, that applies to most things that you consider junk and you do, yeah. aren't, aren't sure what to do with anyway. You know, a really nice piece of oak furniture. I'm not one to say, hey, let's just chalk paint everything for chalk painting mm-hmm. it. Um, if it's ugly and it's natural state, fair game to paint it. We had a dog once that you didn't like. You <laughs> chalk painted the dog. Never yeah. chalk painted any animals. <laughs> no animals have ever been harmed. Or chalk painted. Or chalk painted. <laughs> God. I didn't like its color, so I chalk painted it. <laughs> you could try it. So my last idea, mm-hmm. and I don't know if it would work on this old of a machine, but I know you can remove the washing drums from the inside of old washers. Okay. And it's the part that, you know, your clothes go into. It's mm-hmm. got all the holes all the way around it. But you can take that out, and you have this metal drum, 
and those make really neat fire pits because the fire shines uh-huh. through all the holes. Uh. Now, I'm I don't know that this one has anything like that on the inside. Mm-hmm. I've not looked and if I had, I don't remember what the inside of one of those looks like, but mm-hmm. That's something you can do with any washer that's at least, you know, that age and forward that has one of those drums with the holes in it. You know, I don't know what the inside of this one does look like either, but you saying that gives me an idea, almost like the uh, the outside, you know, patio, you know, like we have with, mm-hmm. the, with the little, you know, gas rocks in there. Yeah. And they do sell the inserts if you're making your own. Mm-hmm. Uh, for doing that sort of thing. And if you, this is not something I think I would, would tackle unless I had a little know-how on how to do that and sure. hooking up the correct gas lines and things of that nature. But if you're handy in that way um, and, and you're able to do that correctly and safely, this could make a neat little outside campfire space. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's a bit high, a bit tall. So, I mean, depending on the size of the chairs you have, I suppose you could probably kill the legs down a little bit and lower it. Yeah. Um, but that could be an interesting conversation piece mm-hmm. of, of that being that if you're able to do it correctly. That's right. that's what I would stress is I, I don't think I would even tackle that. But I would just take one of the take the drum out yeah. and just use it as a wood burning fire pit sure. and just, you know, build mm-hmm. something around it. But, but it, it's kind of a neat looking sure. thing. I yeah. don't know if you've ever seen one of those. I have. Yeah, that's cool. I like uh, I like all those ideas. Uh, there you go. So there's uh, some ideas for the uh, the antique wash basin. If you have an object uh, or a space that you would like some advice on, uh, some uh, some thoughts on uh, what to do with it, uh, send it in to us. Go to our website, junkinwithjenny.com, and uh, click on the uh, the submit button there, and uh, you can submit your, your letter and your image, and we may use it on a future episode of the show and give you some feedback and ideas. On, on what to do. We have another one of those coming up here in just a little bit that you actually did a drawing of. It's a full-fledged house drawing. It's a sketch. It's a sketch. Mm-hmm. And we animated it, and, he, and it's amazing. A little puppy's running around in the it's air. Not, I don't have any <laughs> software. This no. was drawn by hand. It was. So anyway, that's uh, coming up here in just a little bit uh, on the show. Another letter that we got uh, in uh, recently came into the possession of quite a few men's top hats. Who doesn't like a good top hat? <laughs> uh, from his great grandfather who passed away. I believe they were uh, his father's hats, is what the, the letter says. Most are in okay condition. Some are better than others, uh, being that it's not 1920 and I'm not into steampunk. I don't know what to do with these. Donate, sell, or is there a project that I could possibly use these hats with? I would honestly if they're in super good shape Mm -hmm. those i would sell but the ones that are in bad shape Mm -hmm. i would keep and use those for projects okay so my idea was to flip it upside down and use it as a planter with a a, like probably some sort of planter inside of it because obviously it's not going to hold water and dirt i was gonna say that's not wouldn't work very well but it would look neat with a plant growing yes with the correct size pot yes yes in there that's correct so you just kind of disguise it. People are like, oh, my gosh, what are you growing in that hat? And Is that illegal in this state? That's, no, <laughs> your pot hat. <laughs> uh, you know, and that's an easy one. But yeah. I kind of had the same idea you did, but I'm going to yeah. let you talk about it. I'm okay. not going to steal your thunder on So the idea that I had for this, and, and I did a little bit of, uh, of Pinteresting just to see if anyone has attempted this. Mm-hmm. And I did find a really neat image uh, that somebody did do. Um, and, 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 ba- and I'll show it here in a second. Uh, basically, the idea I had, use it as uh, lighting. Mm-hmm. And I'm not just saying, uh, like, you know, put it on a, uh, a, a, like a lamp pole or anything like that. Or a, what word am I looking for? Use it as a lampshade. Like a lamp. Yeah. Not, I'm not, not saying that. I mean, technically, these are kind of lampshade-ish, but I'm thinking more so uh, like pendant type lighting yes, from exactly. the ceiling. Where you actually have, you know, with a hat, uh, the concern, and you probably couldn't have done this several years ago because it would have gotten way too hot. Mm-hmm. It would have been a big fire hazard. Mm-hmm. But now with the LED lighting, this can be done. Yeah. Um, and essentially, you can hang it from the ceiling. And if you have a bunch of them, this is where it could really work out well. I think one might be a little odd depending on where it is. But if you can do a bunch of them in different areas, you could hang it over a kitchen, uh, over a bar. A bar would be really neat. Mm-hmm. Um there's a lot of ways of doing it, um, but this image I'm about to show, I'm going to credit uh, Jake Phillips is uh, a designer, um, and he did this. Um, this is his uh, image and his work. 
Uh, this is, but it's exactly what I was talking about, mm-hmm. exactly what I was thinking uh, of what you could possibly do with these hats. And, you know, honestly, if that's still not your style, mm-hmm. there's a lot of people that don't either, one, have the time or have the know-how to put this together and then sell it or put it together for their house. And so if you did it, then you could easily sell it because there's a big demand for anything that's, you know, either steampunk or kind of vintage like that. And, and that is such a neat idea to use it as a pendant light. It is. It, it's a it's a really neat idea. And, and I, I love the work that he did. I said his name incorrectly. I should correct that. It's, it's I believe, Phipps, P-H-I-P-P-S, mm-hmm. Jake, P-H-I-P-P-S dot com. Uh, is his website to see some of his other amazing design work uh, that he's done. Uh, but uh, just neat. Yeah. It, it's a really, you know, creative way. That was the main thing I thought of. I mean, y- yes, the the lampshade idea will be okay, but it's not really going to come out of it very well. You're mm-hmm. pretty much got a downtrodden light. I just like old hats. If it were me personally, I would just put it up on a shelf up high. Mm-hmm. I just love that. But to use it, make it functional, yeah. I think that's my favorite idea. I like that. I like that a lot. Thanks for uh, sending in the uh, the letter, and uh, there's some ideas for you. Another letter that came into us, and again, if you want to get some advice or uh, submit an image uh, of a, a space, I, I, I really wish... I could just say space or place, but I, it, it's objects that we're talking about a lot, mm-hmm. and nothing rhymes with either. I just like space or place. That would be great if that's all I had to say. Space, place, or thing. Okay. I think should be, I guess. That's <laughs> R-S-T-L-N-E. And one vowel. Uh-huh. Which vowel would you like? Just whatever. Okay. Come on. Uh, the, uh, the next uh, letter says, uh, hi, Tony and Jenny. Love your shows. I want to do something different for the front of my house. Get rid of this 1970s upside-down V. I have a uh, bi-level house, so I can't really block the lower window. I was thinking some sort of porch, but would appreciate any ideas you might have. P.S. I uh, finished the paint job. Uh, This was just the only picture I could find of the front of the house at the moment before I finished the paint job. Uh, uh, It's the entrance to my house, and I'd love a covered sitting area, maybe for a couple of uh, rocking chairs. And this is the image here that was submitted so it's kind of like a 1980s style bi-level house uh it's got the the door in the middle it's got the attached garage off to the side Mm -hmm. two windows uh in the you know upstairs on each side of the door two windows right below uh which are probably i'm guessing kind of you know halfway into a basement area the way bi-levels were set up um and it's a cute little house um but i can see the datedness of it um Mm -hmm. and uh the siding is what would you call that siding? That's the, board and batten. The board and batten the up and hat. down. Yes. Yeah. Siding. And it was kind of a, looks like it was a dark green in its la, its its last state. Looks like she was kind of going for the whiter uh, farmhouse look as she's uh, painting. So. Mm-hmm. so the big V, trying to create a functional porch is uh, the, big, uh, the big thing here. Uh, Jenny, what do you think she should do? Well, I think I agree. The V does really kind of stand out. To me, it kind of looks like a bird beak. So I would take that off, and I don't know what it requires to do that, but, you know, putting all that aside, what would you do? I would take it off. I would add a small porch coming out, just slanting down from about halfway up the windows out, and I would use metal roofing. And the reason I would do that, she mentioned that she really likes the farmhouse feel, Mm -hmm. and the metal roofing is really prevalent in a lot of, you know, farming farming areas so i would use it and have some cedar posts that hold it up and you can make it however wide you need for having rocking chairs or whatever on your porch and i honestly you know with the fence there in the initial picture couldn't really see what was going on behind the fence to know how Mm -hmm. wide that base of that you know porch is but sure that is my idea on that now, having said that, when you take that V down, because that is such a prominent focal point for the front of the house, you're going to notice one thing. You're going to notice the two windows are not the same size. So my thought was, if, if we're going to do this right, we should kind of balance that out. And you can do that easily without replacing any windows. I would add shutters, which go along with the farmhouse feel anyway. I would add shutters the full length of the window when you're looking at the picture on the right. But on the other side, on the left, I would add shutters that match the length of the ones on the right and then put a window planter underneath that window. Window. So visually, you're having the feel of two 
same size rectangular features. That's very David Copperfield of you. David Copperfield. No, it's it's just how you, you look at a house, and it'll be something that you'll notice a lot more with that V gone. Mm-hmm. I can I can see that, and it really does balance it. I wouldn't have thought of that. I think mm-hmm. if it were me, I probably would have just you know uh, cut the shutters to the length of the window, going, "What the hell is off here?" It looks like your house is winking at you yeah. if you do that. But yeah. this this visually opens up that other window, and it, it's perfectly fine to have a window box on one and not on the other. But mm-hmm. it it visually will give it some balance. Are you showing the sketch? I am. I'm showing them side by side right now. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I can totally see that. And that's an important part is that balance. Yeah. Cause you don't want to get rid of one thing you don't like, and then suddenly have another thing that you may not like. So there you go. You got more advice than you were even asking for. <laughs> and, and that's a very, uh, I say, you know, affordable project to do. You mm-hmm. can easily make shutters, which we did ourselves, which we yep. could actually feature in a future show. It is. It's coming up. I, it's either next week or the following week. Okay. I have to remember. I, I, I already put it together. It's on one of the next two episodes. These are decorative shutters. They're yeah. not louvered. They're not designed to work or provide any kind of, you mm-hmm. know, hurricane protection sure. or anything. But they give the feel that you're looking for. And um, I'm getting ready to make some planters for our windows so I can show how to do that as well. Sure. So that'll be good. There'll be some, uh, some added uh, advice on how to uh, construct some of that stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's super simple to do. Yeah. Even I can do it blindfolded <laughs> with one arm while hopping on my left leg. You're not that talented. You're right. Right leg only. Uh-huh. Left leg. I can't do anything. Uh, so there you go. If uh, you want some advice on your home, inside, outside, spaces, junkinwithjenny.com. Send us in the letter. Send us in a picture. And we will do our best to uh, deliver up some advice for you. Next thing we're going to talk about is something that... Uh, kind of done a uh, this is literally the second incarnation of this in a year what the bar (laughs) yeah that's all you (laughs) yeah i mean this bar um we we got uh it's uh it it, we found it at an antique store it was stole it it was a very i was like shocked how how cheap it was and and thank god it wasn't haunted because um (laughs) you know what i I didn't even think of that at the time Mm -hmm. uh because a lot of times on our other show real ghost stories online we hear stories of people like i got this thing at an antique store it was such a great price it didn't even stand out to me why it might be that cheap and it's haunted as shit. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> so far Al Capone has not been sitting at our bar yet. No. Um, but the the legend behind this bar, and this really has nothing to do with what we did with it, but I just thought I'd share this part of the bar. And we story. have no documentation. No, nothing. we don't. This may be just a good story. It, but... it has a certificate of authenticity that no. came with it, and it's uh, it's signed by the parties involved saying, yes, I sat at this bar before I was shot. It is kind of <laughs> weird, though, how... <laughs> Al Capone things seem to gravitate towards you. Yeah, it is kind of. And when I don't have the beard, people think I look a lot like Al Capone. You do. That's why I'm growing it, so I don't get confused for a mobster. (laughs) Okay. Um, But uh, the the story that the guy at the antique store gave us, and, you know, it could have been a line of BS. Who knows? Um, It it was apparently from Wisconsin. We found this bar in Missouri. Mm -hmm. Being from Wisconsin, it was kind of neat because I'm from Wisconsin. Um, And... It's well documented, you know, where his hideouts were up there. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and Capone did it, uh, Dillinger. They had a lot of hideouts throughout Wisconsin. And a lot of towns have their stories uh, and can be somewhat verified uh, mm-hmm. that, the, that the stories of some of the actual stops were legitimate. If this was on one of them, could have been, maybe not. I don't know. Um, but anyway, the, the story is this bar was in one of those places. Um, and the bar itself, you can tell by the way it's constructed, uh, the... Uh, what would you what would you say? It's not there's not screws in it. It's like literally wooden pegs that hold some of this yeah, thing together. Right. Uh, it is of the right era, and there is some markings on it uh, to verify the era that it was in existence. It's heavy so. and old. So it would have been around at that time. Yes. So the potential, I guess, is there. Anyway, uh, Al Capone and and John Dillinger have not showed up in spirit form uh, in <laughs> our bar yet, but I'm getting it set up. To very much feel like that, so maybe eventually, once you set up the uh, the the area, you just keep hoping and for set that. Up the, and put a you want to conjure the ghost of put a some Ouija boards in the uh, awesome. the bar. Uh, anyway, so that's our bar. Uh, but uh, what the big thing we're talking about here today is the bar back, and this is what it looks like. Um, it, it it was very simple to do. Literally, I think I did this thing in less than an hour. You did. 
and all by yourself. Yeah. yeah, you you totally just like I'm gonna build this, and I was doing something else. I didn't even help. Oh. All by myself, and I, and I did it. No I, singing I, allowed on this show. I sang while I built it. I'm just sharing the story. I did it the whole time. You're in the other room, like just singing as I'm building. Whistle while you work. Okay. <laughs> Um, but here's here's what we did. Um, I got the uh, aluminum backing there that you see uh, out of my dad's shed. Mm -hmm. um, and this has been sitting there forever. Like since I was a kid, I remember seeing this aluminum back. I didn't know why it was there. Um, and it turns out it's from my uh, my grandfather's, his father's uh, mink shed um, from like the 70s. Uh, or 60s. I don't know. When I, I never met them because they had passed on before I was born, so I don't know a whole lot about the, chron the chronology of the mink farming business sure. that they had. I just know what happened. And, um, and no no longer are minks farmed in our family. No, we don't. We don't have a <laughs> mink farm anymore. No. Uh, we have ferrets out back. No, we don't. No, um, but that's, that's where it was from. So it's from a, a family farm. Um, and this was from the, the shed that they had out back. And uh, they, they held on to it. They've had no use for it. I said, can I take some of that? I think we could probably use it in something. So I, I got it um, and decided, you know what? I'm going to take some of this uh, wood that I recently stained. And I actually used the wood for a different bar back, uh, almost similar to, to this right back here behind me uh, on camera. That was kind of the bar back. I had the shelves on it like that. Um, and then we took that down, and I used that wood to frame the bar. And just simply screwed the uh, the aluminum into the wall there, then framed it up, put the uh, uh, the shelves into the 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 studs back there, and uh, just made sure it was affixed good and tight. And the shelving itself are nothing more than uh, you know uh, plumbing, plumbing uh, pipes, plumbing pipes. I you know the uh, galvanized steel mm -hmm. plumbing. And you could go with the uh, they have like the silver. We went with the black kind of fit a little bit better. Um, or you can always spray paint it yourself if you want to go with a different color. Uh, but a very inexpensive bar back to make. Now granted, I guess I got that uh, as a reclaimed piece of material but those pieces are not expensive. I have no idea what they would run but I know that yeah. they can't be much. They're not. They're not very much. I don't know the exact retail but they're not much and I really needed like I think three, four of them is what I used total. Um, and then, you know, the wood, again, the wood is nothing special here. It's mm -hmm. just stained. You could use barn board if you wanted to, or, or, a, a cedar fence post. Fence post is what mm -hmm. I was looking for. Um, and just chop off the top mm -hmm. and get a nice piece like that. And you're going to get the exact same uh, sort of look. So really all in all, you could achieve a bar back like that for, I don't know, I'm going to guesstimate, you know, with the, the plumbing, you know, uh, piping, I don't know. What do you think? It just depends on what the metal sheeting runs. Sure. I'm going to guesstimate under $100. I would think so. But or in that in that yeah. ballpark, depending on where you can get the material. A lot of this material, like especially some of that sheet sheeting and stuff, mm -hmm. uh, watch Craigslist. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of this stuff. And, and even like sometimes just the lumber. Um, you'll find people going, I got a pile of, you know, odd and end lumber. Mm -hmm. If you're wanting to do some of this stuff for free, please pick it up. Get it off my property. So you could I know, be really, you could probably do it for free if you really uh, did a little bit of digging mm -hmm. uh, and took your time and just kind of accumulated a lot of the material. Um, but created a really neat look uh, for that bar back. And it's just fun to be able to look at something like, that you made. And uh, there's some satisfaction there. But know that, you know, understand the history of it. Sure. And, and kind of go, you know, I bet some of these screw holes my grandpa put into this thing when he was hanging it that you still see on mm -hmm. the uh, on the, the sheeting. So that was a, a neat piece. Yeah. So did it all by my God. <laughs> And now Jenny drinks. <laughs> <laughs> I just cut straight to you. Just Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> This is why you really should watch the video version of the show God. beyond just the uh, the audio podcast at uh, junkinwithjenny.com. Uh, last letter here today. Uh, during a uh, recent basement cleanout, I came across uh, this old table that I used to play cards on back in uh, college. It's not in bad shape. It just really doesn't fit in with uh, much of my grown-up furniture now. I've contemplated just donating it, but I'm wondering if I'm just not seeing how to turn it into something better. Jenny, what would you do? Well, I, I really like oak tables because I like the graining on the oak, mm -hmm. but the color is kind of 
past its prime on this. It's beautiful. <laughs> it's kind of goldenish. So there is a type of stain, and I I will be full disclosure. I've not tried it yet, but I plan on trying it really soon. But I've seen nothing but wonderful things about it. But Try at your own risk. It's general finishes. Okay. And it's a gel stain. And you take it and you can actually use it over previously stained and sealed mm -hmm. wood. So I would make the top darker. I would make it more of a modern feel. You know, you can go whichever direction. You can go towards blacks or browns as far as the color tones you want to reach. But I would make the top darker. And then I would paint the base. Okay. And you can... You know, if you wanted to go something really modern, you can do a gray base with a really dark top. But I like kind of a dark chestnut colored wood with kind of a cream or a white base. Okay. That's what I would do with it. Otherwise, paint the whole thing. And if you, you know, paint it a funky color, that's always fun, depending mm -hmm. on what your decor is. If you wanted to just paint it kind of a neutral color and seal it really well, it goes with just about everything. Sure. What I would do on this thing uh, you'll notice the the top of the table. It's not just one solid color. In fact, it's it, it's it's almost put together, uh, for lack of a term, like a wheel of fortune. Yeah, it is. <laughs> um, the uh, it, it's triangles or a pie uh, mm -hmm. or something. Um, and, and each piece is is slightly different in color. The grain is different, so that's what tells me it wasn't just stained differently. Uh, there, it's literally you know, almost triangle pie pieces of wood all mm -hmm. put together into this circle. Um, what I think I would do with it is is sand it down, uh, get everything off. We get it to be a nice third surface, get, you know, anything that it just looks like wood again. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think I would tape it off and where the graining changes, each piece. Um, and maybe pick about three different colors and, and significantly different uh, colors, but kind of in that same tone family, if you will, like how you would do like a like you know, like a backboard, not necessarily these colors by any means, but uh, you know maybe like kind of a gray, maybe kind of a reddish, maybe kind of a uh, uh, I don't know, almost you know more brown, mm -hmm. um, something that would would fit in a nice you know cohesive you know color palette, sure. um, but 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 significantly different, not just a slight different shade of gold like it is right now. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I would do that, uh, in different kind of random orders on the pieces. Um, so it almost kind of has that, you know, kind of retro -y look that a lot of things have right now with the, the reclaimed wood and such. Um, but I would, I would play off of the, uh, the different pieces of wood that are in there and the tones, um, and have some fun with that. Be a little bit more work cause you do have to do quite a bit of sanding, I'm sure to get that down. Yeah. Um, but uh, with an electric sander, I think it, the job could be done in a relatively. I so thought you were going to say you were going to tape it off and paint it to look like a Wheel of Fortune that for too. a gamer. That was the first thing I thought of. Um, <laughs> you, you know, when I was a kid, I always wanted a Wheel of Fortune. Uh -huh. I'm not even kidding because I loved Wheel of Fortune. I just like <laughs> staring at Vanna White is what I like doing. Yay. Yeah, that's that's uh, that was me at uh, five. And that's why I look just like Vanna White. So. <laughs> Well, what people don't know is that uh, sometimes you do dress in the gowns <laughs> and then you, you have just like letters you just random, randomly put on the wall. And, oh, God. Uh, I haven't been in a like, gown like that since high school. I'll solve the puzzle, Pat. Um, <laughs> so weird. <laughs> but when I was a kid, I always I, I loved watching Wheel of Fortune. And the wheel also just fascinated me. I'm like, this, this is an amazing thing. <laughs> this is it's so huge. You're and such a hamster. I just want to spin the wheel. <laughs> I'm not even joking. I'm not making this up. Um, and uh, my mom, as a kid, uh, she didn't make me the Wheel of Fortune because obviously that would be insane. Uh, but she did uh, put on in our basement wall uh, at the first house I grew up in. Um, and, and hung it on the wall about the size of this clock over here, just, you know, like a spin, you know, <laughs> a spin wheel. And I would go over and, and, you know, spin it and the little peg it would mm -hmm. be on the peg thing. And I would stop there. I'd, I'd wheel over on my trike. I was about three. I'd spin it and I'd say, and I'd go, big money, <laughs> big money. Then it would land. And then I'd drive my trike around the circle in the basement again, around the furnace and then back over and spin it. Big money, big money. Wow. That was the uh, the joys of my childhood. You want to know the biggest letdown of my life ever? Since we're talking about things with my therapist I'm here. scared to ask. What? You ready? What? 
He relates to Wheel of Fortune again. Oh, I know. This is the sad sob story where the mall was supposed to. Hey, host no! Don't, don't, <laughs> don't. <laughs> I've heard don't this. rain on my Wheel of Fortune. I've heard this a few times. When I was a kid, God, Wheel of Fortune was supposed to come to my hometown. I don't know why. <laughs> why the hell? Wheel was of it Tony Danza supposed to come <laughs> to? Sorry. Just keep walking all over my story. <laughs> Just keep <laughs> shitting all over the story. <laughs> Anything else you want to throw in? I'll shut up now. Um, <laughs> so, Wheel of Fortune is supposed to come to the town. It's like all over the mall, and they're going to have it at center court. Like, they remodeled the mall. Mm -hmm. I'm not even kidding. They took this really cool retro -y fountain out, made a center stage, all that. It was, like, actually framed for <laughs> the production of the damn show so they could fit the wheel on this stage. Okay. Um, well, guess what? They canceled no Wheel of Fortune. What did we get? Instead, freaking Tony Danza. And then a long line all the way down to the J.C. Penny uh, to, uh, to see Tony Danza. To see who's boss. It was who's the boss time. Uh -huh. I think it was like in its second season or something. So some people knew who he was. They were like, okay, that's great. Where's Pat Sajak? Yeah. Where's the wheel? Yep, that's, my, uh, that's my depressing tale oh. of the Wheel of Fortune. Such Aren't you glad you know that now? Difficult times for you. <laughs> Tough times in Wisconsin. There you go. <sighs> okay. Well, we have a product today uh, that we've used, and uh, Jenny's going to do a little review of it, just like uh, uh, one of Bob Barker's, uh, uh, Barker's beauties. She's going to hold the product. <laughs> Where is it? It's right there, isn't it? I'm going to spray you with it. <laughs> So this is the product over a little bit more this way. Uh, this is the uh, the product. It's Mace. No. Uh. <laughs> no, it is Rust-Oleum Specialty Frosted Glass, semi-transparent finish. And I heard about this from your mom because we wanted to do frost on some paned windows. Mm -hmm. And you can get the film, but the film is a pain in the ass when you have several panes because you have to cut each single pane yeah. and, and put it in there and she had used this before and recommended it and we gave it a try on four windows and i thought it worked wonders yeah and i didn't have to tape anything off because it goes on clear so on you know these old windows that we did you know we were spraying a side that had a white paint on it anyway mm -hmm. so that was fine and uh we just sprayed right over everything and it sets up in like five minutes. It really does. Um, and it, it turned out really good. I don't have a picture of it up here today to show, but it will be on a, a future episode of the show uh, in use. And uh, it's part of the bar uh, setting yeah. that we're actually we're building up. And I would say it says semi-transparent <coughs> finish. Uh, you can definitely see light through it, but mm -hmm. you could use it on a bathroom window, which I'm tempted to do because we mm -hmm. have a odd bathroom window placement situation where... I want to get light into the bathroom, but I don't want the neighbors to see into mm -hmm. the bathroom. So I'm thinking that I might actually use this on our bathroom window. But, um, you know, you put your hand right up on it, you're going to see through it. But, you know, five, ten inches away, all you see is a shadow. Yeah. So I would use it for that. And it says you can even use it on the outside of a shower door mm -hmm. if you taped it off, you know, to kind of give that privacy sure. effect. So it it's supposed to be, um, you know, pretty durable. For Waterproof. That. Uh, that's why I said the outside of the shower okay. and not the inside. Okay. Um, and you know, if you change your mind later on, it is removable. It tells you how to take it off. Really? Yes. How? Break the glass. <laughs> Break the glass. <laughs> no, it says. Um, dun, dun, where did dun, I see dun, that? Dun, to remove dun. frosted finish from glass, use lacquer thinner or acetone. So okay. Basically, nail polish remover will take it off. There you go. It's uh, so far so good with it. We really like it. Um, and you're going to love what we do with it uh, on these uh, old vintage windows that uh, we found also in my parents' shed. Yeah. Um, same shed I found the aluminum, believe That's it or not. It's been my favorite place to antique so far Just my year. parents' yes. lawnmower shed. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, lots of random stuff in there. Um, and uh, it's, uh, I don't want to give too much away, but it's it's a really neat idea we've, we've kind of come up with. For building with this bar, uh, it's not just exposed to the rest of the rooms anymore. It's actually been given its own space mm -hmm. with windows that go just into the house. 
but it's uh, there's a neat thing coming up. We'll talk about it a little bit closer to Halloween because it's kind of a Halloween-y idea, but it's something I can guarantee anyone who comes to your house, if you were to do something like this with a room, uh, would be like, oh, my God, you're insane. <laughs> Yeah, uh, and e- that it, and the the tone in which they use will will tell you what kind of friend they are. It'll be, oh my god, you're insane. That's great. Or, oh my god, you're insane, honey. Get the kids. You know, <laughs> it's one of the two. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's um, it's fun. It's one more reason for us to be hermits. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. We never have to leave here again. So that's uh, that's coming up on a future episode of Junkin with Jenny. Probably a little bit closer to Halloween is when that one will uh, air. May even end up falling closer to Thanksgiving. But anyway, it'll be soon. Okay. So don't miss it. Um, And that wraps up today's episode of Junkin' with Jenny. Yeah. There you go. That was fun. Do you feel junkified that you got? I don't know if that's even a word. Uh Uh-huh. Like expressed a lot of opinions on junk? Yeah. Okay. Good. I think. Next week, we got uh, some more uh, exciting stuff. Let me just take a little looky here if I can pull it up uh, and talk about what is uh, coming up. Uh, on uh, the next episode uh, of Junkin' with Jenny. Um, We have uh, some interesting things to talk about involving globes, Mm -hmm. uh, involving the old uh, 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 encyclopedias, Uh you know, that people would get and, you know, now they just see it. Uh, Some chandelier fun, uh, what to do with some of that. We're going to take a look. It is next week uh, at the, uh, the shutters, how you made them. Okay. What, what they look like. And that uh, built-in entertainment center as well uh, that uh, you made from the ground up. So we'll talk about all that uh, and more next week on Junkin' with Jenny. If you got something you want us to talk about, uh, some advice on a space, place, or item, send it in, junkinwithjenny.com. There you go. That wraps up today's episode of Junkin' with Jenny. Thanks, everybody, for watching. We'll see you next week.